On this episode of Create Consume Repeat, I'll show you how to properly set up your green screen and harness the power of the A10 Mini Pro's chroma key feature. So let's dive on in. Whether you're tuning into a Twitch live stream or catching the daily weather report, green screen has become a staple of live broadcast. However, achieving the perfect chroma key with the A10 Mini Pro can be tricky in a small home office setup. But fear not, with a touch of ingenuity, we can attain broadcast quality results. First, we need to decide where we plan to shoot our video, as it will influence which green screen solution we select. For folks that prefer a set it and forget it approach, you should consider painting a wall with Roscoe Chroma Key paint. For those afraid of commitment, you can pick up a roll of Savage Seamless Paper in Tech Green, or opt for the more environmentally friendly Westcott Wrinkle Resistant Chroma Key Fabric Backdrop. Just keep in mind that both of these options will require light stands or C stands. And lastly, my personal favorite, you can embrace- Brother, uh, what's that? You can embrace the efficiency and simplicity of the Elgato Green Screen XL. And in case you're wondering, I'm not paid or sponsored by anyone. I've simply tried each option and determined that the Elgato is the best option for a small office studio, since it features a wide retractable screen, which can be set up in seconds. Just flip out the feet, extend the support arm, lift the screen and secure it. And it's that quick. And let's be honest, no one wants to look like this dummy right here. With green screen material out of the way, we can turn our attention to evenly lighting our green screen. And this, my friends, is an extremely important step since not lighting the screen evenly will cause massive headaches down the road when we key ourselves out with the ATEMS chroma key feature. So without turning this video into a full on lighting tutorial, I'm just gonna go over some basic lighting tips. Number one, place lights on both sides of the green screen to ensure uniform illumination. Or if you have the luxury of high ceilings, you can mount your lights from above using a crossbeam and auto pole. Don't know what an auto pole is? Then check out this video right here. Two, choose soft light sources positioned at a 45 degree angle to minimize shadows and create a smooth, even light. Three, adjust light intensity for consistent brightness across the entire green screen. And four, avoid light spilling onto subjects and your surroundings by employing flags and creating enough distance between the subject and the green screen. This will simplify the chroma keying process. Clearly, everyone's setup will vary, but in my small office, I've chosen to use a tube light hanging from a crossbeam and an Aperture Amran P60C mounted on a pigeon behind me with my falconized 4x4 serving as my key light and lighting me from the side. With our green screen deployed and lighting set up, we can now jump into the A10 Mini Pro upstream key. Clueless about upstream and downstream keys? Then I suggest you check out this video right here. It does a great job, if I do say so myself, of explaining and demystifying core principles that you should understand before going any further. Step one, let's first ensure we're all starting with the same settings by expanding the upstream key drawer, selecting the chroma tab and clicking reset all from the hamburger dropdown. With that done, we can now select an input, color or image from the media player in the preview section. I'll be selecting my Xbox One X on input one. Step two, next we wanna head back on over to the upstream key drawer and once again, select the chroma tab. From the fill source dropdown, we wanna select our camera. And for me, that's my Sony a6400 on input two. Once you've selected your camera, we can click the chroma sample radio button. If you are unable to make that selection, please ensure your upstream key is off. Now, to sample your chroma green background, simply drag the box around the selection window. You'll notice that the selection dynamically follows your movements in the preview window. If you find that the sample area is too small, you can increase the size with this slider right here. I personally keep it small since it minimizes the chance of selecting other random colors. Once you're happy with your selection, hit the preview button. And just like that, the green background is being keyed out in your preview window. Step three, as you can see, my key is not perfect. And here are where the key adjustments, chroma correction and color adjustments come in handy since they will allow us to dial in a sharper 
key. Obviously, your setup will differ from mine. So here's where you need to play around to find what works best for you and your setup. But don't worry, I'll explain and demonstrate how you can get the best results. By default, the foreground and background sliders are set to zero with key edge at 50. Now, before you start pulling at the sliders, you should understand how each alters the image. For example, the foreground slider controls the opacity of the overlaying video, which is your subject. In this case, that would be me. Now, keep in mind that reducing this can make the foreground slightly transparent. The background slider, on the other hand, adjusts the opacity of the background fill. Increasing this makes the new background more opaque, which is useful if the background is too faint or, or needs a little bit more presence. And finally, the key edge specifically targets and refines the edges of the keyed subject. This is most noticeable around my hair. Now. Under chroma correction, we have the spill control, which helps remove the background color that reflects onto the subject. This is partially useful when the subject is close to the background, causing green light to bounce onto them and, and create an unnatural tint. The spill control will help you remove this tint to achieve a more natural look. Another useful refinement control is flare suppression, which helps clean up the key around reflective materials or light skin and clothing. Color adjustments are pretty self-explanatory, but keep in mind they only impact the subject. And lastly, we have the mask, and this will allow us to crop the top, bottom, left, and right. But before we go any further, let me explain how video programs divide the live area into axes. If you have experience with an NLE or motion design software, feel free to skip ahead. For those new to this, I've provided a simple diagram that shows how the live area is divided into four quadrants, with the center being where the X and Y axes intersect. On the X axis, positive values extend to the right, while negative values extend to the left. On the Y axis, positive values extend upwards and negative values extend downwards. With all that science out of the way, we can go back to adjusting our mask. As you can see, my green screen, while wide, does not cover the full background because I'm using a really wide lens. To remedy this, I'm going to crop the left and right by changing the values in the left and right dialog boxes. And with that, you are now officially licensed to start your own weather channel. Now, I understand that for some of you, this isn't enough and you crave the power to place yourself in the lower corner, just like Dr. Disrespect. So let's select the flying key radio button. And upon doing so, you'll notice that we have shrunk by 50%. And this is perfectly normal. In fact, some of you might want to go even smaller. And here is where the true power of the ATEM shines, since you can reduce or enlarge to your heart's content by manipulating the X and Y size values. Just bear in mind that these values are linked by default to ensure the aspect ratio is maintained. Feeling subversive or just love a bit of chaos? Go ahead and unlink these values and watch your flying key transform into a Hunter S. Thompson fever dream. Get in. Once you've landed the exact size you're going for, we can turn our attention to positioning the flying key by entering values into the X and Y dialog boxes. Just keep in mind what we learned earlier about positive and negative values in relation to the X and Y axes. As you can tell, I'm a purist and love being in the bottom right corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner. And with that, you are now officially well-versed in chroma keying. Have any questions? Well, let me hear all about it in the comment section below. But equally as important, smash that like, subscribe, and bell button so you're notified when I drop a new episode. See you guys next time.